The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show. Brought to you with Levi Solicitors. 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Dan here with Michael and with Moscow White as well. We're picking heroes and villains now in part, usually part three of the show. It's part two today. Hope that's not too confusing for you. Um, stick with it. <laughs> do, you, do you not trust our listeners to count to three? You'll get up to speed soon. Just just hang in there. Uh, yeah, right. So first is the Ken Bates Villain of the Week Award. Uh, Ken hasn't said anything this week, which is great. So we don't have to hear from him. He was our former chairman. He caused us lots of misery. So who has done the same for us over the last seven days? Well, Wolves, uh, various people, concepts surrounding uh, our lupine friends are uh, are on the list. So where do we want to start with this? And this has got loads of feedback as well from our TSB Plus members. I like Wolves. I'm going to put it out there. I enjoyed that game enormously. So nothing bad to say about them. Great bunch of lads and um, look forward to playing them next season. I mean, Jimenez in particular is just absolutely getting packed here <laughs> in these nominations. There's so many. Uh, in a crowded field, as Rachel points out, in a crowded field, he's the worst diving, cheating little shit I've seen at Ellen Road this season and was no different in the uh, in the game at Molyneux. Fully deserved to be sent off. But the worst thing was he gave the manager the excuse he needed to write off Wolves' shit second half performance. Amen to that, Rachel. Love it. Uh, Raul Jimenez's dad got in, in touch. I'm not was sure. It, was, not, it, was this in Spanish? Or? Uh, no, and he seems to hate his own son because oh. he, he's got a list of his offences actually over the years. Did Calvin's shoulder in 2020. Ah, kicked of course, cock, yes. kicked cock in the same game. Stamped on Cock's shin on Friday. Um, and ripped his sock. And ripped his sock. Let's not forget about that. So you should bill him. Adidas will be furious. Bill him for that. Poxy winner um, 2020 as well. He got straight out booked for diving in this one. Um, cheated all his career, he was then thrown into the middle of it and then tried successfully to injure Melier. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's that's his list of offences against Leeds United. From his own father. From his own father. Um, it's like Marvin Gaye, shots by his own father. I mean, Wolves and Wolves in general all getting hammered for the general approach to it. It'd been a bunch of crybabies, entirely their own fault. You lost, as Lucas puts it. They were, I mean, they were fine before this match, weren't they? It's just Wolves. I mean, Jerry. Jerry's saying that fecking DJ at the game who thought he was part of the show. They can also stick their flamethrowers and big flags where the sun don't shine. Yes. Well, this is all part of the weird other wolves where they promote themselves in Mexico and they have the big following in China and all that stuff. They were very. They have this weird other other side to wolves that I wrote about on the the blog, and I I wonder um, how much of that might be our future. But let's not worry about that too much right now. So we'll just dismiss it all as terrible. That we do it, it'll be great. Bruno Large's uncomfortable chair suggests they are anti-football bastards, um, the way they've played for years. Um, and when uh, it goes against you, you don't get to bo- uh, bitch and moan about it. There was a lot of that in the comments throughout, was just a feeling of them getting their comeuppance, more or less, for, for persistent cheating over the past couple of years that we've had to witness. And then it was like, all of a sudden, in a space of like 40 minutes, it just all went so horribly wrong for them that it just made it extra sweet. Small town in Walsall, says Adsham. And all the stuff with them, like between the two benches, we've all, you know, we've discussed what a lovely group of quality men Jesse Marsh um, adores working with at Leeds. So I don't think anybody on the Leeds bench will have been starting anything. It must all have been the, uh, the horrible wolfish people I mean, this is this uh, is emerging hairy faced and <laughs> saber toothed. This is uh, across. This is going to Jimenez, isn't it? I mean, let's get through some of the the other ones. But Jimenez has to be the absolute front runner here. Front runner here. Like again, we always look at weight of nominations. He's got the most by a mile. Uh, Bruno Large as well gets some some comments. Uh, Matinho, that one we didn't really deal with that to any great extent um, because he was lucky to get away with that as well. We should technically be making long YouTube videos next to a bin crying, complaining, calling it a shame of world football. I might actually just get my phone, sit in the car for 20 minutes, yell at it until, you know, people in adjacent buildings come out to wonder what's going on and uh, shout and scream about how Kevin Friend is um, should be put on trial at The Hague for not sending off um, Matinho for that tackle because I think that's the fair and appropriate level of response. But nobody seems, we're just using it like whenever Wolves fans are crying, just like, well, what about this? 
Yeah, and the other point is we've kind of gone, well, he probably should have had some sort of comeuppance for that, but he didn't, but let's just crack on with that anyway. Probably because we won. Someone, someone has raised the issue, actually, of King of Spain. Uh, despite looking at least 70 years old, always has the look of a man who'll score against from a dead ball situation. I'm trying to look up how old he actually is, because he's... Latino, I think he's 35. Yeah, he's 35. Yeah, he, he, does, he does have a look of like a sort of an aging gangster. Like he's probably still got probably still got quite a bit of fire about him you don't mm. want to fuck with him as Stuart Dallas found out I suppose mm. but yeah it, I, it, it, that was another thing lost in the, that goal was that we basically saw Dallas on the floor and we're like we're going down to 10 here he look, he's knackered yeah and he probably he probably is knackered we've not yet heard yeah, about his injury have we yeah the, uh, the punditry as well comes in for some criticism in the, uh, in the villainy nominations Gary Neville Jamie Carragher although Jamie Carragher was quite funny in that he seemed to lose his mind um in the Sky coverage, when it was the equaliser, he just kind of, I think he was overwhelmed, wasn't he? And he just ended up shouting the word scenes mm. in the aftermath of that. But um, he, he was then saying how much he, he loved Liverpool. I mean, to be fair, when they, when they were criticising us about our def- terrible defending and stuff, it was fair criticism because we were shite. Um, you still don't want to hear it from them, though. No, this I is mean, true. I mean, it's all, whenever that's happening, you just need to bring up um, Gary Neville at Valencia. Yeah, this Go is on. true. I mean, Stephen is suggest- some more. Stephen's suggesting that Carragher's a, um, a boring little bin sniffer. And also, bad defending's fun. Yeah, mm. they should enjoy it. What? What do they want? They're getting paid to watch these games. Well, and, well, and Carrig- you get to see yeah. some goals. Well, that's what Carragher was sort of saying towards the end, wasn't he? he was going, oh, this is why people love watching Leeds United. But actually, if, if they got what they wanted, we'd just see a nice solid nil-nil. Two really well set up teams. Yeah, two defenses on top, no goals, ball fast, great. <laughs> Nothing to criticise at the end of it. Diving, Fantastic. Just people diving around. Yeah, shite. Um, Right, who else has got villainy nominations? Uh, Bielsa, why? For making our players as brittle as bone china. Oh, somebody even uh, qualifies this by putting in brackets comedy villain, of course. <laughs> um, sitting in Argentina in a huge leather swivel chair, stroking a white cat and uh, pulling Jesse Marsh's strings. Yeah, it's perhaps McGinty. Yes. Come up with that. Uh, Lampard, you know why, says Jack, uh, which is an absolutely fair point. Mm-hmm. Ryan saying that he's a, he's a shit manager with a playing career inflated by penalties. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to go back and examine that, won't we, about his, uh, his career stats when we next decide to uh, assassinate the man. Um, the goalpost protesters get a mention by Lawrence. Yeah, we, that was kind of because there was so much madness going on on the field that um, swift work by the Wolves steward meant that the uh, the old cable tie around the neck didn't happen. Although you can see from that footage, it's one of the fan cams, isn't it, that we found in propaganda. You can definitely see it up close. The guy was uh, was going for it again in, with his orange cable tie. I really like the idea that they're going to have to have bouncers for goalposts. I think it's I think it's a, going to be a fine addition to the Premier League. Um, the offside rule, actually. Um, Could someone cable tie themselves to Frank Lampard? That his broken hand. Someone should do it. Ow! <laughs> Drag him round. Uh, this is a good point. Is this about the the offside rule being stupid? Um, Korean White's mm. Josh says. The thick bastard who made the ridiculous rule about not raising the offside flag um, and it's directly linked to Bamford's injury. It's very true that, isn't it? If they just put the flag up like they used to do. And this is what really confuses me. We saw it at some points um, in the Norwich game where the flag would go straight up. I go back to the, the scum game as well, where I seem to recall on one occasion the flag went straight up for us, but then not at the other end for mm-hmm. an almost identical scenario. And I don't think it's the fault of the, the liners. I, su- I suspect that they just don't. No, but they're, they're having to second guess themselves. Exactly, because they're doing it wrong, so it's their fault. So instead of going, oh, that's offside, I'll put my flag up, they'll go, oh, I'm going to say, I've got a, uh, but then there's VAR to bail me out. But then, what? oh, I'll put it up now. There was yeah, a Dan so James on it in this game where we all could see Dan James was miles offside. I was going to yeah. suggest it was Mike Riley's fault rather than the liners specifically. Nah, but no, I mean, I am actually. I like this rule for how often it's given us Luke Ayling marching towards a uh, linesman shouting, get your fucking flag up. That's been worth it. So I'm in favour of it continuing. Um, so somebody, <laughs> somebody's mum gets a bit of a nomination. Anyway, again, niche, kind of very personal, but let's read it out they, anyway. They've so put their name in as happy birthday mum, which I think is, even though we don't do birthday shout outs, I think yeah. they've tried to put their name as that in a very sly way of getting around it. So I'll allow it. It won't work. <laughs> we will not read that out I think I just said it oh, damn cut out again this person says my mum is a stupid birthday this stupid weekend so I couldn't be at the stupid game mm. and his dad getting called out as well my dad Dave who put the following on WhatsApp at half time and I quote absolutely no way we get back into this where's the faith dad eh you dickhead where's the faith <laughs> Uh, how maybe, was how was your dad at halftime? Did you? I didn't really. Did you um, find out? No, I didn't really interact. Presumably he'd gone. He just sent me a flurry of messages, you know, like of increasing swear words. I think I'll uh, I'll read someone else out. I'll have a look. I'll track I'll track down what Dave my Dave was saying, and uh, and I'll come back to you on that. I've got, and I've found one. 
Uh, it was uh, three screwed up face emojis. Help me, ah. Followed by, oh my God, that was 10 past 10. <laughs> followed by a quarter past 10, ah, in capital shouting letters. There you um, go. And, he, he, <laughs> and the, the first one was, I'm absolutely destroyed. <laughs> About 20 to 10 on Friday. The Woodwork, Marsha's Mayhem nominated it. And I did look. I did check this. We've hit the woodwork seventeen times this season, which is second only to Man City. We, bear in mind they have about four hundred shots a game. I think suggests we have been unlucky there. Mm. Mm, and yeah. Rafinha alone has hit, it's hit the woodwork six times this season. It's a conspiracy, isn't it? it? That's what it is. It's a Premier League conspiracy. They've made them. A, they've fractionally brought them in, so we can't score goals. The and, sooner we ship that post-hitting jinx out the door. <laughs> Can go to Barcelona and hit their post if he likes. I don't um, care. Oh, hang on a second. It's, it's turned negative now, lads. Um, Rodrigo gets a nomination by Marsh's Mayhem. The post-match team photograph in the uh, in the changing room is making the rest of us look bad, isn't it? When they were all flexing with their abs mm. and the muscles. Like, yeah, look, he, he's he's just upset because his 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 wife was looking at that that photo with admiration and. Uh, it is hard to live up to him. I, I kind of, you want to go back to the old days when occasionally you'd have some fat lads playing football still, yeah. even at a professional level. When you say it's hard to live up to them, are you implying that you try? No. Like, are you, are you in <laughs> Somerville? You're just this far away from... I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm within a four or five stone of it. <laughs> <laughs> Single digits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Four, four or five stone yeah. and, and probably about a thousand hours in a gym. You were keeping pace with him, but then he hit puberty. You know? <laughs> it was easier when we had Paddy Kenny. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. More, more attainable body shapes for the average man. Mm. It's a big problem, isn't it, these days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to keep up with the, you know, how these people look on online. So have some. I want to see um, <laughs> Neville Southall types. Yes. It's just probably not playing for Leeds because we'll be losing. Jimenez, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Jimenez, definitely yeah. our villain of the week. 100% nailed on. Congratulations. Right onto the Katana Baradi Hero of the Week Awards. Um, loads of people getting love in this. The players and the spirit in general getting um, nominations, but it feels a little bit nebulous, does that? So let's get into some of the specifics. I mean, Luke Ayling, an absolute mile of these. I mean, Ken Bates stole my seat, just says Bill, 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 this many nominations on there um by the end i'd stopped putting individual comments on and just listed names because because you're lazy because it was everybody no it was more work more work <laughs> than copy and pasting <laughs> which is funny because i'm sure if you went back a few weeks people would be saying you'd bin him off in summer get cody drama back from cardiff and uh wish him well send him off into the sunset thanks for all your effort goodbye uh, your but- article did some up nicely about ailing just because uh, we've had those discussions i'm sure at mm. points this year as well being like oh, it's not been great has it and I guess when he's playing centre back, he's looked a bit iffy as well, but that's because he's not a centre back. Well, on that, back, well, well, Ryan, whose full name is Ryan, I'm glad I continued paying after signing up to rant about <laughs> TSB Plus, says Ailing, he's good when he plays right back, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Even then, he's he's had he's had moments. He's had some pretty bad moments, and um, but I think there is this. I mean, there is that story that's been going, or this developing idea that we need to ship everybody out in summer and sort of start again. But these are the kind of games where it's the whole cliche of like um, you, you're out, but then they draw you back in, and just when you think, you know, Luke Ayling, he's never going to be as good as he was again, and he's hit his ceiling or whatever, he just they do something, and then you think, you know what? How old is he? Is he 29? He's 31, I think. Now he's he's Luke Ayling. 31. He's, I, think he, I think he probably is. He's 30. He'll be 31 in August. He's 30 until he's 31. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you've, you know. Maybe he's not in the same condition, but you have got players like Ibrahimovic going until the 40 in Syria and stuff. So I think rumours of like Ailing's demise maybe are overblown. Everybody this year has had a bad season and it's difficult to play in a team when so many other players are, diff- are out injured. Everybody's trying to cover for everybody else. Um, and we've not seen anybody at their best, but none of it means that they can't come back next season and have a really good season. So yeah. we, we could do with another right back um, just to cover so that Stuart Dallas has He's a one freak. less have you not, Have you do. not been reading about Cody Drama? He's a freak or whatever they've been describing him as at, I think, at Cardiff. Uh, I think we could go back and villainously nominate um, Wales Online, the Trinity Mirror. 
clickbait merchants for coming up with that word, you know, because he's a Leeds loaner, he has like two seven out of ten games and he's pumped this out. He's a freak of football, the greatest right back that has ever been seen. It's like, absolutely astounding. Mind obliterating you. the championship. He's playing yeah, pretty but, well. But I was going to say, when the, when the bar is Steve Morrison ball, mm. you know. Yes, but um, I think... Quite low. I think... Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad he's doing well. I think, yeah, Trinity Mirror know exactly what they're doing by writing that kind of article. If you it's, want to read good stuff, thesquareball.net, where you won't get any of that shit. Yeah, no. You'll get our particular brand of shit, but... <laughs> <laughs> they won't have any auto-playing videos of absolute nonsense either and lots of other benefits. Any, survey, any surveys at thesquareball.net popping gonna up? Not going to be popping over, no uh, um, adverts, and we can't promise to reduce the level of um, adverts on the website if you subscribe because there aren't any. Anyway... Um, Luke so we could maybe do with another right back, but Luke Ayling is... He's the heart and soul of the he's team. He's got a lot of time to I go, also, hasn't he? I very much appreciate Alan's reason for nominating him as well, saying he loved how after Raul clatter Melier, Ayling sprints across the pitch and he's clearly telling the referee he should be booked and sent off. Then in his post-match interview on Sky, asked about the challenge and the red card. He says, I don't know, I was on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> you can it. actually one of the clips we played in propaganda before from the crowd yeah. you can hear fuck somebody say fuck off Ailing yeah. <laughs> brilliant love that and he is I was saying then before sorry I talked over you I was just saying he's the heart and soul of the team he's carrying the, the sort of the promotion team spirit isn't it I think that's mm. one of the the hard things that we've been forced to confront this season as you were saying like this this narrative that we need to move on and chuck it all in the bin and we don't do we we just need to kind of build on what's there yeah. and, and keep these guys at having, the... having a second right back wouldn't mean we have to get rid of Ailing it no. just means he doesn't have to play every single week because if they're like Junior Furpo they'll never play <laughs> so it won't be a big deal and you know you've got a player there who can play he can play centre back um, in the Premier League he's not the best at it but he can do it and it's always kind of you don't want to lose a player like that unless you really have to. And I don't think just, you know, hitting your 31st birthday is necessarily the time for the scrap heap. I'd, I'd love to have that back. Um, God, I'd love to be 31 again. So uh, I'll say this as well. Say uh, and, and did we mention this at some point? Was it the match ball? Again, it's just a, an adrenaline, you know, fuzzy haze at the minute. Did we mention the celebration, how it was the complete antithesis of a Premier League celebration mm. where you see these dickheads with their bloody they're doing this and you know well, I mean I know Bamford does that that's fine but it, it's different he's he's us so he's fine but the, you know you get all the kind of these well Ronaldo's the like the, the dance the, routine the, 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 best, the, yeah. the best example of it he's got his he's like I've got my trademark celebration everyone needs to get out of my way I'm doing a thing let me do this otherwise mm -hmm. the goals I might as well have not scored if I can't do this but if you do watch it back carefully you do see Luke Ayling pushing everybody away <laughs> saying I have my prepared rehearsed celebration but that I need to do but he's taking the piss Moscow that's what I was going to say is like yeah. he's taking the piss out of the whole thing he's subverting the genre is what he's doing he's a good like, guy to, but to have the presence of mind because if that was me in under those circumstances imagine imagine this the pinnacle of your career, the time of your life. You've never earned as much money. You're at Leeds United. It's, you, you know, you're fulfilling a lifelong dream. You've been 2 0 down in a Premier League game. Survival in the division is on the line, and you pop up and score the winner in injury time to make it 3 2 and give yourselves a massive chance of surviving in the division. What would you do? I'd be I'd be doing what Joffy did, which mm -hmm. is to run around screaming. Which was also good. Yeah. I enjoyed that a lot as well. But to have the presence of mind to think, no, 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 no. I've had this one stored up for a while. I'm going to do the Robbie Keane under these circumstances because my people, my crowd, my audience deserves this. They deserve to see me larking about and making a fool of myself. I think that's the nice thing with Ailey. He, he clearly is incredibly dedicated and has got through the years of Bielsa and has pushed himself on to a level that probably even he didn't think he could be at. But also recognising that it's all a fuck about. It's just a game. Mm. Yeah, it's fine, isn't it? You can piss around, and that's and that's what Mateus Click has as well. Have fun, when you, particularly when you're winning, just have fun with it. It's yep. good. Actually, try to enjoy it. I think we've sometimes struggle with it a bit as well. Yeah. I certainly do because I'm like, God, we just need to win games and bloody stay up. But actually, just it, there's there's joy to be had in 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 amongst some of the the misery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think he's probably the big favourite for this one. But some honourable mentions for other people in there I mean should we do the, some of the Leeds players like Rodrigo for example has been given a number of nominations for his improvement for his uh, grabbing it by the balls approach which seems to have happened in recent weeks which would please Frank Lampard because he showed bollocks He's grabbing the bollocks, actually. Yeah, Roger says, uh, whereas previously I thought of him as the biggest waste of money since Peter Barnes, now I realise he's an attacking midfielder up there with Strachan. That's very good. And uh, Gillian, I don't know why she's nominated Patrick Bamford as a hero for making a cry. I felt so sorry for him, but that's... Um, it's a sympathy I, I thought it was more... Yeah. That's a villainous behaviour, but he definitely... Um, his face was quite the story of the match, wasn't it? Of, uh, I don't know why he got so upset, but kind of 
you know, maybe it's just a, it's the opposite of, or a similar uh, slice from the same piece of ham as Bill, <laughs> that just the emotions that they all, uh, they all are wrapped up in um, get the better of Bamford, but it was nice to see him smiling by the end. And also being confirmed by uh, Jesse that he was absolutely fine and put Gillian through all this emotion for absolutely nothing, just making a big fuss. It's funny, some people uh, liking Jesse Marsh for you know, the stuff that he was criticised for in recent weeks, like putting a player who in Bamford was only fit for 10 minutes at a push against, was that Villa, the Villa game, um, versus now putting Calvin on the bench against Wolves just basically to piss piss around with people's heads, you know, that he was there as an option to come off the bench when he was never going to use him. Mm. So people liking that now, you see. Yeah, that's Andrew from Brooklyn saying, uh, and it is a, um, made us feel mo more hopeful than having a toddler sat there. And it was, um, I don't know what the value is, because it's impossible to measure what the value is of having um, Calvin and Cooper on the bench, not ready to play, but ready to fight the other bench and ready to run across the pitch and, and celebrate. That was kind of the, when we were talking about Luke Ayling just before and the, the way the players have gone through it, the the last bit of the celebration when everyone kind of walked away and there was just um, Ayling and Dallas just hugging each other. And then Calvin Phillips um, went in for the hug as well. And I think that was the first time Ayling noticed that he'd sprinted all across the pitch. So what are you doing here? Yeah, people like, Calvin's here as well. And it was just, and they're, um, they're probably, I suppose Liam Cooper, goes back further than Ailing and Dallas, doesn't he, by a, a season. But then after that, they're the longest serving kind of three, Calvin being through the youth team. So it was kind of like a 2016 or 2017 reunion happening by the side of the pitch. It's all very lovely. And so whether, you know, as Andrew's saying, there's kind of this idea of Calvin just being on the bus and on the bench adds something. I think it, I really think it does. I'm starting to, to buy into that myself that you see, the togetherness of these young men in this and I suppose group. if Bamford's going to be there crying his eyes out you, you can't really leave it up to like Lewis Bait to sort him out it's alright dad <laughs> you don't worry about no, it I was going to say if you've got someone like Liam Cooper who's a bit of a wiser old head he's going to know some good power ballads whereas you know the, these kids Lewis Lou Bait are just be playing hippity hop or whatever it is that the kids listen to these days you need to cry it out to a good power ballad don't you mm. when you're upset um, some of the um, non-player nominations the concept of injury time is picked out by the vicar pointing out that um, Wolves at home, Palace at home, Brentford at home, Norwich at home, Wolves away. Injury time has been worth 13 points for us this season, which... Uh, and it's taken years off our life. I yeah, which is probably well. is the story of uh, of the season, isn't it, really? And an alternative reality is uh, pointed out by Marky Mark, wants to nominate Kiko Casilla for a hero, hmm, uh, for a green to go on loan. Imagine the reaction if he'd been on the bench <laughs> against Wolves. I yeah. doubt we'd have won. I mean, we'll never know, will we? But uh, And, and to, to stick on the goalkeeper... Class and got lots of nominations as well yeah, for, yeah. for coming on and making some some really good saves and and just dealing with it in a way that it's it was a tough game to go into ideally you want to be playing a fairly meaningless end of season you know let's stick him in yeah. for, a, for a laugh in yeah. the last game of the season or whatever big balls says simon big ball and all yeah. of them i mean the, the youth in general but also creswell got several as well for um for that reducer on uh, whoever it was <laughs> ryan ryan for that neck uh, is what he, you know, he's a big lad he's uh, on the dressing room photo it's almost a shame Charlie Cresswell wasn't towards the front because he's a such a he's such an absolute brute I don't know what I don't know what he's being I'm, fed I'm fairly sure you know have you ever latched on to like footballers who are in the same school year as you you find a particular interest in them like mm. I found out this week that Eric Backer would have been in the same school year as me Christ he's aged so well by the way as Eric Backer if, mm. you, if you look at pictures of him now he looks so good for his Sorry age the other week actually walking by the uh, east stand yeah it was the Norwich game well, though he's been in town, hasn't he, um, for a couple of games. But um, I'm just looking at Richard Creswell, who I'm fairly sure from memory was the same school year as me. Yeah, he was. He is. Um, so I am I am able to be... Why is your son not in the Leeds team? Because he's 10. Pathetic. Not a good enough excuse. He's nearly the same age as Archie Gray. <laughs> but I'm, it, it just I find it really interesting that kind of you put yourself in the shoes of him and he's the same age as me and that could be my son. I won't mess with him. <laughs> no. <laughs> If he says, I'm not tidy in my room, Dad, I'll say, all right. And he just, I want to see more of Cresswell. I find him, for a centre-back, I find him really like box office to watch just because mm. he's got such a, a an incredible <laughs> confidence about him. There's a, I was looking, because I just checked the official website for news, there was some sort of charity thing. He was in like an old people's home doing some charity. It was the keep, it was like an active keep fit thing where they got some old people into Welland Road right. to uh, do some like chair exercises and all sorts. 
But I can just imagine him calling the old man pal and stuff. Oh, he looks, he looks very confident in conversation with them in ways that, like, the more sort of awkward introverts among us can only look on and admire. But the best bit in that video is him hula hooping in front of them all, um, which is just imagine standing in front of just people hula hooping. Still, uh, still only a teenager as well. He's twenty in August. Is uh, is Charlie? Are we all? I mean, we saw at Christmas the way he was bossing Joffy around on the uh, the the ranking of Christmas chocolates. He's he he's very strong in his opinion. Future captain. Yeah, of whatever he wants to be. Like <laughs> whether he you know he gives it up and he's captaining a submarine, whatever it is, he will be in charge of it. Um, Jesse Marsh himself gets some nominations for back to back wins and so on. Uh, we've got the bench uh, were pleasing people by getting into a ruck with the the Wolves bench. The football gods have been smiling on us this last week. So uh, I mean, they have, as, uh, as Zach in Australia points out, the football gods who up to and including this moment have dicked us every turn. But thankfully they've um, they've shined some uh, positive energy on us, some, uh, some light this week, haven't they? It's been a stressful season, but... It's not over. It's not over yet. <laughs> so right. that's not the end of it. Bryn Law gets one for keeping his composure after Rodrigo's goal as it sounded like he had a feral chicken loose in the commentary box. The, the, of the famous Rodrigo chicken. <laughs> I do enjoy listening to the uh, the bias on that. I was I actually I listened into the Wolves version of Bryn to see if he sounded upset. Didn't sound asked, so I didn't include it. I was hoping for some real tears from them, but yeah, quite professional. I'm glad Bryn's more uh, more biased. Uh, Liam Bryn is not professional. <laughs> exactly. It's in terms of <laughs> I don't want, I don't want a, a neutral doing club no. commentary though. No. Exa- you, you definitely you just want myopic S- screaming yeah, swivel eyed bias is what exactly we want. yes um and the irish leeds fans as a collective entity are praised by liam he says i was in dublin on my mate dean's stag do watching the game with a load of other leeds fans absolute chaos at the last minute winner causing a range of injuries namely the stag dressed as a horse flying into a microphone stand on a stage and accidentally <laughs> smashing the microphone into the face of the musician setting up for their gig after the game at least it sounded good oh and we all caught covid too absolutely <laughs> worth it there we go uh, we're getting into frank lampard we do injuries too aren't we here with uh, bragging about all the uh, the broken ankles and covid and everything but yeah it was um it was a wild evening uh, there's uh, one other to mention that i think just in case uh, we're in danger of letting the wolves contingent down kevin friend obviously gets a lot of nominations from probably every leeds fan because uh, we all chipped into his uh, his bag of cash but joel and baps and darren and kit all uh, um kit says he wasn't perfect he didn't put up with the majority of the shit the wolves tried to throw the game we expected those tactics although he could have sent Matinho off and booked him as for diving but we'll just about allow it it was a pretty heroic an eight, uh, and it was an eight out of ten wasn't it yeah pretty much i mean yeah. even then i mean the money we paid him i would have mm. expected a bit more yeah but um i think darren well darren describes him, darren describes him as fastidious which i think is absolutely fair well that was it i mean that was one thing in the uh those propaganda clips as well where he's like um uh he already had the yellow card in his hand as if he'd got it out before Jimenez brutally assaulted ah, Melier. We know it's what like, happens here. But even if it doesn't, I'm booking him anyway while yeah, I jog over. Dickhead. There was no part of it. And it was also like he made the decision too quickly. I don't know how long he had to spend. Because you, you could see on the footage, he goes over, says, sees if they're all right, brings the physios on, and he's looking at the assistant who'd given the foul and was right next to it. He's like, what do you think? He's like, yeah, it's a yellow card. He's like, right, we'll get the card ready and it's fine. There's no, like, the fact that he had the card ready while he's still being treated is... You referees, it's not part of the job to wander around going like, mm, <laughs> let me think. Oh, now mm. I'll do, I'll let me speak to a few other few other players. Yeah, I'll, I'll see go, what I'll, I'll see what Connor Cody has to say. Connor, see what they're you... saying in the stands. Oh, it looks like the bench have got some opinions, but oh, I just can't. I can't make up my mind. What am I going to do in this situation? Whereas you know, it was he checked his dis- he checked his phone. And he had a message from um, the Premier League, the FA, what, FIFA. Someone. What had they told me to do before this game started? <laughs> right, yeah, wait until they're 2-0 down and they've already had four players go off. And then when the goalkeeper gets clattered, then it's a red card. That's the ball. moment. That's the moment. But make sure you've already booked him because you won't get away with it being a straight red. <laughs> Uh, uh, so Kevin Friend honourable mention for a great performance on Friday but he's a referee and they're bastards and he's not having it Um, um, Leeds United Bay Area Mug t-shirt Mug t-shirt stickers great bunch of lads that's a little sticker you've got a bigger one bigger one on my laptop yeah mine is bigger than Michael's Um, Ailing 
is got to be it's ailing. It's ailing for the celebration, the goal, for carrying us. There was no mention of Jackie actually in all the nominations, considering he scored and was quite pivotal in uh, in he's so, s- several of the goals. He's so understated in so many ways. I mean, the, that free kick for the goal kind of sums him up the way that he's kind of stamping around frustrated because he's made a mess of it and it, I've seen people discussing especially with the argument with Rodrigo that he's not really a big celebrator mm. and I can remember I wrote about it after um because he scored against Crew, didn't he in the the League Cup about him his existence at the back post where he's always there waiting for one more pass so he can score but it either gets shot and goes wide or shot and scores and the Swansea the big Pablo Hernandez goal is the perfect one because he's there he's like I'm here, give me the ball, give me the ball. And Pablo just scores and he just kind of goes, ah. <laughs> and like, the most important goal ever. And you know, it's not actually like an ego thing. He's not thinking, it's just like, it's like, oh, okay, that, you've done that. Okay, cool. When the winner goes in at Birmingham as well in the 5-4, yeah. he just is exhausted in yeah. the back of the net more. I, I think that's it. He puts so much into getting himself into position and being ready to do it. And he's like, oh, I can do this, I can do this. That when it happens, it just takes him a moment to go, Oh, okay, right. Okay, we scored. Yeah, so he can kind of just chill out, and they'd be like, "Oh, they're, they're having a party. I'll go and I'll go and have a look at that." I think somebody so. did ask him that. I don't know if it was a fan event or if it was an LUTV or whatever. And he said it's just because he's knackered. Yeah, he's absolutely knackered from the amount of running that he does. It's like, yeah, and, and he tends to do a sort of a quiet fist bump, doesn't he, to himself when when good stuff happens? But it sometimes gets misread as being like yeah. some sort of slight towards the. I mean, we couldn't players. have we uh, bless him as the absolute standout hero of the week, but I think an entire squad of bills would be a bit much wouldn't it that would, it starts to wear you down after <laughs> going on a, after that's, a while. going on that stag do yeah so you need a lads, couple stop, of stop uh, pranking everyone lads you need a couple of jackies just to kind of balance it out have any of these drinks not been pissed in <laughs> a, a single one of them come on well it was the anniversary of the old uh, bristol of um, course yeah was it ascot races that they went to or cheltenham, cheltenham i think it was um, yeah where he was he was just a bystander while one of his teammates was uh Throwing um, piss. Yeah, pissed in a <laughs> pissed in a pint pot and then threw it off a balcony while Ailing looked on and laughed. But he's well, he's not really changed because he stopped doing that kind of he's stuff. He's keeping better company. Certainly is. Well, he's got Jackie with him, isn't he? He never got to catch Harrison doing that kind of stuff. There we go then. The uh, Gitano Barada. Maybe that's what he meant by being more of a be a son of a bitch. Throw some piss <laughs> at more people. <laughs> the Gitano Barada hero of the week is Luke Ailing. Um and a fitting a fitting award for what's been a good week. And now we go away and we relax for the international break and not be stressed by it. I'm sure something will happen that will stress us out. <laughs> Probably Augustine verdict will come in or something. Anyway, um, that does wrap up the show for this week. Um, thank you for watching and listening. We appreciate you. Um, we'll see you in a bit. The Square Ball Podcast. 